Good, good evening, everyone. Uh, the, there are some security issues uh, that have popped up so that, that uh, uh, except for the members of the committee, uh, people will have to raise their hand later on to be unmuted. Uh, and so that, that, unfortunately, this may take a little while longer. Uh, we're going to uh, work on what has been the normal procedure with the Transportation Committee is that uh, we allow for comments and for uh, public input during any presentation. Uh, what Even though it says open session for public comment on the adopted agenda, when we get into the discussion of the open streets, we will be going through the list of open streets for the uh, CB2 and that we will ask people to raise their hands for each one of the open streets if they have a comment, all right? We will do the comments first, okay? Uh, when we do the comments, the comments for the general public is limited to two minutes. Uh, we ask if you're from a group that you uh, and you have a specific comment on one of the specific open streets that you uh, uh, merge that together. So we're not hearing the same exact thing over. If you want to do separate things, it's okay. I'm more than happy to spend the amount of time necessary uh, to listen to uh, every uh, comment we have. Uh, uh, the Department of Transportation. Uh, Kyle is supposed to be here. Uh, it, I know they have one announcement that they need to make. Uh, there is an error on the information that was originally provided to us, and that uh, I, hi, hi Kyle, uh, that there was an error that the uh, for for some reason I I'm, I'll be honest I get confused with Willoughby and other places too occasionally, and uh, Willoughby uh, is. Uh, even though the list we got said that they had changed to what we had recommended, I've been uh, informed that that is a mistake, that the DOT uh, 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 has informed us that even, and I, and I, and I thank the, uh, uh, the borough chair, the borough commissioner uh, as well uh, for making the change. And uh, I, we learned uh, about 5.30 tonight, sometime between 5.15 and 5.30, that uh, uh, Willoughby will remain a 24-7 open street, even though our recommendation is other, was otherwise. Uh, but we will go through, we will go through the list. Uh, each one of the, we will have a discussion, it will have a, uh, a uh, public comment period on each one of the open streets. Many of them are not uh, 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 are not controversial. Some of them are. There are a couple of them that are. Uh, and we will list here. And, and if DOT would like to make a general comment about open streets, when we get to open streets, I'm happy to all give them time at the beginning to do so. Uh, but the, my, that's that, that that's what I plan to do tonight. I plan to do it in in that format, uh, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, obviously as as chair, I do have that 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 compilation, and uh, uh, that's how we're going to do that tonight. Uh, John, will you uh, call the roll, please? Sure, members, uh, board members, committee members. Unmute yourself so we can go through the roll very quickly. Uh, Sid Meyer, Chair. Present. Esther Blount, Vice Chair. Here. John Quinn, Secretary, here. Ernest Augustus. Uh, here. Sandy Balboza, I got your phone call, Sandy, but you're here, right? Say something, Sandy. I saw you were on, all right. Uh, Juliet Cullen Chung. Here. Uh, John Dew. Cheryl Gelbs is not here. Uh, Kate Gilman. Here. Brian Howell. 
Here. Patrick Kalaki. Nicole Murray. Here. Jonathan Rogers. Ciro Scala. He's here, I saw him. I saw him. Ciro, say something. You gotta unmute yourself, Ciro. And Sandy, unmute yourself so we can confirm you're here. All right. I saw Ciro before, and either way, we have a quorum. I'm just I'm going through to, to see. Uh, I don't see. I don't. Well, I don't. See, uh, whatever. It, that doesn't matter. If he's either, whatever. You know. He's either here or not here. We're, right. Okay. But we have a quorum either way. Uh, can I get a motion to adopt this, the agenda as I discussed it? Can I get a motion? John Quint seconded. Motion. No seconded. objection. Any objection? Being no objection, the agenda is adopted. The adoption of the previous minutes. I mean, I've seen the minutes and they were fine. I, I, uh, uh, obviously, anybody can look through the minutes from the previous me pre previous meeting, and if you have uh, an objection, please let the office know. Nicole. Yes, I will run through this quickly because I know we have a big meeting today. So we're doing district level craft staff. Can you see my screen? Yes. yes. Great, so what is this? This is a bird's eye view of the um, uh, traffic collisions in our district that result in injuries, whether to motorist, pedestrian, or cyclist. Uh, we do this because we can't all be everything everywhere all at once like that movie, uh, but we can use this data to see what's going on at a high level. This data comes from the NYPD. Uh, it is fed into an API and we can pull it and visualize it. Uh, it is any crash that has been reported that resulted in an injury or does over a thousand dollars in damage. Some information may be ambiguous or incorrect. It's up to the, uh, the officer making the report. And obviously some uh, collisions that were not reported um, were, are not going to be in here. Um, so this is for the month of February. So in our district, we have this map here. Uh, so we had, let me go a little bit bigger. One second. Not working on what I'm sharing. All right, so we had no fatalities in our district in February, which is great. Uh, 10 cyclist injuries, eight pedestrian injuries, and 39 motorist injuries for a total of 57 injuries out of 47 total crashes. And uh, yeah, I can't zoom for some reason, but um, uh, they're, again, they're all concentrated around the usual suspects, Flatbush, uh, Atlantic Avenue and Park Avenue. And I'm just gonna jump over again. I'm gonna go through this quickly because we have a packed agenda. These are for the last year. Uh, so from February last year up till now, you can kind of see trends. The blue lines are the total crashes. Red lines are all injuries. This is not just, um, this is not all crashes because then the line would be off the charts. This is crashes with injuries and all injuries. Um, so we're kind of seeing this like weird pattern. We had a dip in January, which is typical. People are away from the holidays. We are ticking back up. However, I will say in terms of like a sort of 10 year overview, you know, we're still into 2023, but we're actually at a little bit of a lower rate um, from, from years before. Um, so, you know, this was COVID 2020, very safe for people outside anyway. Um, and if we can kind of keep up the rate we're going, we're actually gonna be in a better spot, but we don't know just yet till the year um, continues. Um, but here's where we are. So we're getting, uh, again, motorist injuries lead the way. Um, you're most prone to an accident or in, in a car. Um, and uh, we're seeing a pretty uh, luckily um, low level of fatality so far. And um, I'd say cyclists and pedestrian injuries are staying relative, relatively flat-ish, um, but still remain somewhat low, but obviously every, every injury or fatality is, um, is troubling. Any questions? The, the, the fatality, the motorist fatality, the pedestrian fatality, uh, do you know where those are on the... Uh... Yes. So the motorist fatality, this was the one that was actually not officially counted in our district because it happened on a border. Um, so again, there's like some of the stuff is ambiguous, but this was the person that ran that went over the LARR. Um, oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, and the pedestrian fatalities, I'm not sure where they were. I could look it up. I don't think there was a pedestrian injury there. There was a passenger injury. 
Um, that person, I think, survived. Uh, so here, community board two. And we go to last year and pedestrian fatality. So here we have one uh, that is on. And David, that's down by the, uh, that's down by the Navy Yard. Yes, so we're at the top edge of the Navy Yard here on Kent. Um, I don't have, I can't, unfortunately, this school doesn't um, really show too much in terms of like cause or, or what happened. It just has the cross street and some of the basic info. This would be available in the NYPD database, but it's unfortunately not fit in here. But um, if you were to go look up in that database, um, which I can post the link in the chat, uh, you can find additional information in the report. And, and they have actually the cause of failure to yield right away. Yes. So I don't know from who, but uh, probably the vehicle. Uh, Esther has her hand up. So are you counting the fatality or the accident that you said was on the not really in CB2 or are you only counting CB2? So that one was like, it's not fed into here either. That information wasn't part of the report or it was counted for CB. I think eight is the one below us or six. Um, but it happened like right on the border and it, it's like ambiguous, right? I put it in my spreadsheet as an addition but if you were to look at the data, I'm not sure where or why it was counted. Um, but it, it, as far as I'm concerned, it happened in our district because it was on Atlantic. Right. It's off Atlantic. I mean, I understand where this is the one where when he came out of the parking lot, he somehow wound up stepping yeah. on the gas and wound up in, in the... Uh, the train yard, yep. The train yard, so... Mm -hmm. Let's see some chats. Um, okay, any other questions in the chat? or in the, from the community. Okay, I think we can stop. Thank, thank you, Nicole. I've always, I always appreciate it. It does really high things. And we, we, we actually uh, need to start looking at the uh, police reports too at some point, which we've stopped doing and we need to get back to that at some point as well. All right. The the uh, on the next thing on the agenda is the uh, as I said the open session for public comment. Is there anybody who wants to make a comment on the borough? Well, we'll we'll make we'll we'll do what we normally do. After we have the presentation, we'll we'll open it up for for comments uh, uh, and questions from everybody. Okay. So, Andy. Uh, I'm going to call on Andy Eaglesby from from the MTA, and uh, Andy, it's your floor. All right. Can you hear and see me? Yes. Great. Okay. I'm going to just ask my colleague Ali to uh, share his screen for the presentation. Ali, go ahead. Okay, thanks, Ali. So uh, first of all, uh, for those of you that do not know me, my name is Andy Inglesby. Uh, I'm Assistant Director for Government and Community Relations here at the MTA. Um, I wanna thank CB2 for inviting us uh, tonight to give a presentation on the long awaited ADA accessibility project at the Borough Hall Station. Um, we're very happy to talk to you guys about it. Um, it will be starting in earnest in a little in several months, and uh, we wanted to come before the committee before um, we actually get started. Obviously, to briefly talk to you about what you can expect, and um, we'll have a lot more information as we progress in the next couple of months. Um, what this presentation will show you is uh, information about what the scope of work will entail, both for the ADA project at the station and also the project that will bring the uh, station to a state of good repair. Uh, what we will not be showing you at this time is uh, the actual street impacts of uh, Drawland Street and Court Street. And the reason is, is because we are still in negotiations, uh, discussions with our partners at New York City Department of Transportation. Um, those discussions are going well, but um, 
timing is everything. And um, we really wanted to come this month to talk to you about the actual project. But um, we are pretty close to uh, being able to tell the community something uh, along with DOT regarding the street impacts. So bear with us, please. Um, just please note that uh, we will be um, informing the community about those street impacts uh, in the very near future. But uh, this presentation is really just about the scope of work for the, um, the actual station project. Okay, that being said, um, Ali, if you could go to the next slide. So uh, we wanted to just uh, come tonight and, as I said, discuss the project. Um, this slide shows the project stakeholders. Um, MTA Construction and Development um, is in charge of the project. Thailand is uh, the project management consultants. Judd Lau Contracting is the uh, design design builder, the, our, our contractor. WSP is our consultant and Modern Elevators is the sub contractor for the elevator. Next. Okay, so as everyone is familiar, um, the Borough Hall Station complex consists of the Court Street R Station and then the Borough Hall 2345 line. The major work for this project will be within the four or five station. Um, we'll be making it completely accessible. Um, we will be keeping the historic elements of the station, uh, but at the same time, um, modernizing them and updating them. Um, as I said, the scope of work is divided into two categories. We'll be doing uh, ADA upgrades at the four or five station and bringing the station to a state of good repair. I'll be talking about the elements in a little bit. Uh, the project was awarded on December 28th, and um, we are looking for substantial completion uh, in spring of 2025. Don't worry, we are looking to have the actual elevators uh, in service before that, and we'll go through the timeline um, in a little bit. Next. Okay, so customer benefits uh, for the ADA. Um, as I said, the station will become fully ADA compliant. Um, there will be three new elevators, one from the street to the mezzanine level, and then two from the mezzanine to the platforms, one from the northbound to the northbound platform and one to the southbound platform. We'll also be raising the ADA boarding areas at both platforms, and we will be reconfiguring the fare arrays to make them ADA accessible. Um, in another slide uh, to come, we will also be uh, widening the sidewalk to accommodate the street to mezzanine elevator. That is the one street uh, element I, I, I am able to show you uh, this evening. Um, we wanted to make everybody aware that we will be um, widening the sidewalk to uh, accommodate the, uh, the street elevator. Okay, um, customer benefits for uh, the general uh, state of good repair project. We will be doing structural improvements within the station. Um, restoring uh, the architectural work there, especially the historic work. Um, we'll be providing a new waterproofing um, across the roof and also the sidewalls of the station, um, something that's sorely needed. Um, I know that a lot of people have commented and complained in the past about the, uh, the soiling of the tiles um, due to water seepage. So, we will be waterproofing um, the station and replacing those tiles as well as part of this project. Um, new artwork as well. It's approximately 1% of every construction and development budget, um, pro uh, project budget is dedicated to art. And um, the artwork component at this station will be uh, mosaic tiling on the walls. We'll have more information uh, in, the, in the coming months regarding that as well. We're also gonna be upgrading the uh, mechanical electrical plumbing systems, uh, MEP in uh, construction jargon, and um, also up upgrading the public announcement, fire alarm and CCTV systems, critical elements that we're very happy will be uh, upgraded as well. And then we'll also be um, upgrading the, uh, the, platform, the platform edge at the station, at, at the platform, uh, both platforms. Okay, next. So as I said, um, the one element of the street that I, uh, we can discuss today is the, um, the actual placement of, this, of the street to mezzanine elevator. It's gonna be on the Borough Hall side of Jerolman Street, the north side, and it's gonna be um, on the side of Borough Hall closer to Columbus Park. Um, 
so this slide delineates exactly uh, where it's going to be. And we will be bumping out the, the sidewalk um, so the elevator will nicely fit with plenty of room around it. Okay, next. So this slide basically just shows where the elevators will be situated on the mezzanine level. Um, and we will be uh, closing stairs uh, throughout, throughout the, uh, the project as well. Stair closure is going to be restricted to one stair at a time in, or, in order for everyone to still be able to access the station uh, with proper uh, access levels. And um, we'll be notifying um, the community board and all the elected officials uh, once we uh, decide what is the actual phasing for the closure of the staircases. Okay, um, construction schedule. This bar chart um, basically shows, in essence, what the next slide uh, shows. And the next slide really is, is more uh, conducive to this presentation. So um, as this shows, we will be starting with this asbestos abatement in May. Um, but uh, Ali, if you could go to the next slide, it more clearly de delineates it. So um, we've already uh, done some mobilization within the station. Um, and we're gonna be starting in earnest in April. Um, we're also going to be, uh, as I said, performing the asbestos abatement. Uh, it should take about a month or so um, from May to June of this year. Um, street, street removal, um, or actually the, the correct word really should be street changes um, and utility relocation um, will be for approximately six months. We're looking at um, some changes to Jerome Street uh, to be uh, approximately six months. Um, as I said, we will be we will be finishing up discussions with DOT and we'll be uh, notifying the community board and the entire community about what those changes will be during construction uh, um, along Jerome Street and any changes along Court Street as well. Um, starting in November, you'll see work in earnest at this, within the station. We'll be doing some structural work and girder replacement, the actual elevator installation, um, street level, and within the station will be from October of 2023 until January of 2025. So right now we are looking to have the elevator ready for customer use in the first quarter of 2025. And then um, We'll be doing sidewalk road restoration work as well, starting in June, mezzanine and platform work later on this year, and then the MEP uh, starting in uh, the fall as well. So um, this really accurately shows uh, the, the scope and the, uh, as far as the schedule of the key construction elements for this project. So um, you'll see us out on the street really uh, starting in the next couple of months. And then we'll be, um, we'll, we'll have a street presence until um, 2025. Street presence, uh, some more active than others. As I said, the, the real heavy um, street change will be starting in June um, for approximately six months. And as far as service to the station, it's key to point out that, you know, the station will be open, will, will remain open during this, this uh, project. There will be approximately 25 weekends where we will be um, needed to do some uh, weekend service changes, but um, whatever we do to the four or five line, the, uh, the R, the two and the three will, re will remain open. So um, we're, we're happy that the station it, uh, itself by and large will be open uh, remain open for customer access and use during the uh, during the project. Um, as we said earlier, the stair closures uh, for replacement and repair will be performed one staircase at a time to minimize any public in uh, inconvenience. Okay, next. And then this slide is really just to show um, that you know we did we have started some test pits in the area just to identify uh, the best utility relocation. And building foundations, we've been working with the municipal building and surveys. We thank them for being so amenable to um, all of our requests. And then we're just going to continue design work um, as necessary as well. This last slide is just the communication slide. Um, we will be establishing a 24 seven construction hotline um, to receive and respond to all complaints, 
Um, we will be put, pushing, uh, putting up lots of uh, signage uh, throughout the project area and on Jerome and of Court Streets to show exactly uh, the impact and, and the phasing. And then of course, um, my contact information, I'll be the community representative and uh, anyone can email me during the, the, the process as well. So um, that is our brief presentation. As I said, you know, we'll have a lot more to talk about regarding street impact uh, with DO, once DOT's um, discussions with them have been completed. Um, but we really did want to come out today and talk to the committee about our exciting project because it is just a couple of months away and we want to give you guys enough notice um, to digest all this information. With that, I'm gonna turn it back to Chair Meyer and we'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Well, so I, ha I have the first question is, how much is the contract for? It's a good question. Um, John, uh, it's, uh, John, John uh, the I'm project to Oda, yeah. who's the construction manager for MTA uh, Construction and Development. Hi, good evening um, to everyone. Uh, my name is John Putoda. I'm a uh, uh, project in charge. Uh, the contract value for the project is 105 million. 105 million for three for three elevators. Yeah, three elevators. And uh, a state the of major, the, the major uh, work is comes into two parts. One is uh, ADA that is elevating uh, installing three new elevators and uh, state of good repair. That is uh, three major structural uh, uh, girders replacement and the street work reallo relocation of uh, the utilities and uh, the waterproofing entire uh, ceiling, the station ceiling and also performing the waterproofing of the walls. Thanks, John. Uh, yeah, so just to clarify, it's not 105 million just for the elevators, it's for the entire, it's for an entire, entire project. And, and the, the three elevators will give full ADA access to all the stations there, both the R, the, the uh, no. R. This is just for the four or five. Four and just five. for the four or five. Right. Just for the four or five. The two and the, yes. three, the two and the three are already ADA accessible. The four will remain well, it will have elevators, but it will, it will not be ADA accessible. Esther? Yes, I just want to know how, would this affect the buses that run on? Um, so, I just want to know what affect the bus route. Yes, thank you very much for that question. So as part of uh, our discussions with DOT, we are, DOT is discussing with our operations planning unit, the possible need to relocate the bus stops um, around the, the Borough Hall station. So that will be part of the street impact uh, information that we'll have uh, in, in the next several weeks or um, next couple of months. Yeah, to, to add to that effect, we are scheduled a meeting on Monday with the Yeah, DOT. John, yes, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll be, uh, We'll have information for uh, the communities very soon. We, we, we have ongoing meetings with, with DOT, so we will be uh, notifying the community as soon as possible. John? Yes. Going on me, Sid, or you speaking? Yeah, John to Quinn. This? Yeah. Andy, uh, uh, for avoidance of doubt, the, the uh, street to mezzanine elevator is going to land between the two staircases that are on the borough hall side of the station? Um, Ali, could you just go back to the slide showing um, that diagram for the, um, the render, yeah, the rendering for the, uh, I think it was like slide number eight or so. Yeah, there you go. Uh, John, uh, yeah, the one slide back. Because he was, yes. John, you, yeah, that, yeah. this one. This, yep. Uh, John, you want to just talk about the exact positioning of the uh, well, elevators? Just make, I mean, uh, in, on some occasions, a staircase, the, the, the hole in the ground for the staircase becomes the elevator shaft, but you're not going to, both of those 
staircases no, on the Burr Hall side are going to be preserved. Yes. Okay, that's all. Thank you. No problem. Just so everyone knows, I, I'm there are board members who are not committee members uh, who are whose hands are up, and I will call on them. But I'm going to go through the committee people first. Nicole, um, can you repeat the who's the developer for the elevators, and are they going to be operating the elevators and making sure they're maintained, or is that going to be the MTA's purview? So the, 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 John, correct me if I'm wrong, but these, all these elevators are within the station envelope. So we'll be maintaining the, we'll, we'll be no, maintaining. Uh, yeah, can I answer this? Yes. Yeah, the elevators, no, now MTA, C and D, we have, once the elevators are installed and they will be maintained, there is a contract, long-term contract, 10 years, 15 years. So those will be, uh, Maintenance contract, which will be maintained by those people. Yes. Okay. So I, for the, well, I, for the I guess the gist of Paul's question was because we are in close proximity to the municipal building. She just wanted to make sure that um, it would be us. Nicole, is that correct? No, I want to know who's actually maintaining the elevator. Like because the private maintenance yes the service private providers maintenance, tend yes. to perform worse than the MTA in terms of keeping the elevator operational. No, the private uh, maintenance contract is uh, associated with this project, yes. Okay, so private contractors for elevator maintenance tend to perform worse than when the MTA takes it in-house. After the contract expires, is the MTA expected to take it in-house or will the contract No, this, this is going to be a long-term contract, 10, 15, 20 years by private contractors, yes. Okay, so expect a lot of outages. Sure. Well, we're, 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 we're very hopeful that that will not ha happen, but... Um... You know, Brian, no comment for now. Thank you, um, and I'm very glad to see these elevators um, being built. Um, I know that this isn't primarily about the street level impacts, but um, in in the ongoing uh, Brooklyn bus redesign, um, it was floated that there might be changes to Court and Duralman streets, possible contraflow lanes. Uh, and I'm just curious if like, you know, that any design that you are planning for this, either during construction or afterwards, takes into account the, the possible changes with the bus redesign. Yes, it does. Um, thanks for that question. Um, we've, been, we've been working with DOT um, in lockstep regarding the redesign. And um, our redesign team definitely is aware of this project as well. So um, the answer is yes, Ryan. Um, both the redesign team is very well aware of um, any possible changes uh, to the roads to this project, and you know they're, they're taking everything into account. We're we're working with DOT on both projects at the same time. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. I, I had a question about since those uh, stations are really well used. Um, the capacity of those elevators, are they different, larger than the usual elevator? I think they're going to be similar to, for example, the, the, the elevators, say, at um, the Bedford Avenue, LC, I mean, it, re, elevators that we've recently installed. John, I don't think, the, I don't think these, um, these elevators have any um, enhanced capacity. Is that correct? No, the standard elevators, yes. Right. So basically, they're they're the same elevators that you've seen at at, at other ADA stations. If you and if also you... a follow up question: If I were taking the subway at the four, and I was impaired, I would just take the subway to the mezzanine, and then take a, take the elevator to the mezzanine, and then take another elevator down to the platform. Is that what would happen? That's, that's correct. Of... That's that's correct. It'll either go you 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 take the street to mezzanine, and then depending on what direction. There'll be an elevator uh, serving each platform. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Barbara Gringer. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay, but you can't see me. So, um, and thank you for the opportunity to ask these questions and thank you for being here this evening. My first question is, you talked about asbestos uh, removal. Uh, is the 
station going to be closed while that's taking place? Or what, what efforts have, are being made so that no one inhales this asbestos? Sure, I'll let, I'll let John answer that, but suffice to say- um, Okay, that that's a very good question. Be, be, the the right, asbestos work will be performed during the weekend, 53 hour geo. So there will not be any uh, station movement except performing this work. Yeah, so basically oh. the, yeah, the station will be bypassed while we're, while we're performing the asbestos removal. The asbestos removal, okay. you know, we, we have professional, um, uh, a, com a professional uh, company that does this. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that, you know, we, we do at the start of many, many projects. So um, it's something that, you know, the, the team that will be doing it is very, very experienced and um, they, they take all. And will projects. someone from your office be on site and supervising it? Yes, yes. This, will okay. be made, this will be supervised by MTA. Transit people. And, and is it throughout the station or is it just specific spots? No, the identified locations. They, okay. they perform this, they have a containment, well done professionally, and it will be tested once the job is completed. The air will be monitored. All All right. And you'll, you'll be... share those test results with the community board? Sure. sure. Absolutely. That'd be great. Um, my next question is, you're, you talked about waterproofing. There's a real problem in that station when it yeah. rains at the entrance where the staircase is at the south side of Jeroleman Street on the west side of the street. Will this waterproofing uh, work address that issue? At the end of the job, we are expecting that the station should be water leak free. So that would include the entrance stairway area. Yes. 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 Okay, that sounds great. That'd be wonderful. And then yeah. finally, um, perhaps this was a misstatement. I, I heard Andy, I think you said this uh, not long ago that the four will not be ADA accessible. Did, was that, did, did I hear that no. right? No, I said the four or five, this, this will bring, this project will make the four or five station ADA accessible, fully fully ADA okay. accessible. And where is the elevator going to be to get you to the Brooklyn bound side? On the mezzanine, where is that gonna be? To take you yeah, down you to the platform. Yeah, you can see in the drawing. You wanna pull it yeah. out, uh, Ali? Uh, Ali, you wanna um, bring that rendering back? Just bear with us one second. Thank you. Of yeah. course, no. There you go. So, yeah, John, you want to, can you describe physically where exactly this is going to be? Is it going to be near the token booth? Uh, for, for, the, for the Brooklyn bound? Yes. We are at, uh, Well, the booth shows there on the bottom. Yeah. All right. It's hard for me to. Yeah. Just, yeah. See. No, it's in the bottom of the middle. It says booth. Okay. I don't see that. Look. Okay. If you All look, right. at, Mr. Look. Mr. Holmes, could you zoom in, please? Thank you, Taya. That didn't help. All right, uh, I'm, it, that's okay. I know you put it in a good place, no, I, but I, we wanted, you know, yeah, if you could pinch it out a little, if it's possible. So, I mean, there are two staircases and there's a token booth. Where in within that area will this um, elevator be? Right. Um, Ali, could you? And I assume that, that behind the token booth, that entrance there will be used by the courthouse when it's finished. I, I, I don't know for sure, but um, I, I thought it might. I didn't show that uh, drawing.
Can you can you expand it a little? Can you make it a little bigger? Yeah. Make it uh, full size. Uh, yeah. Why do you keep doing it that way? It's so no, I mean, if you could so just tell me where it is, that would be great. Yeah, John, do you know exactly where the Brooklyn bounce within this within the mezzanine level? All right. You, the you one, know. the one is okay. The one is the street is. Um, we know where the three one is, but but the, the the question is the Brooklyn bounce. The Brooklyn bound is this one, the one which it shows the Brooklyn bound, the track next to that is uh, the one which is down here alone. This is the one. Okay. So it'll be so it'll be near the staircase. Yes. This is the one with the Brooklyn bound, and this will be the Manhattan bound. This one will be the right side, top one will be from the street. Okay, and then a number of years ago, um, we there were plans brought to this committee to um, on on the north side of the the station to take out to to put in like a half a dozen turnstiles. Is is that plan dead in the water at this point? So right now, this this project will be um, rearranging the turnstiles to make them age. Yeah, accessible. It is so, accessible. Okay. Yeah. So that yes. project is gone. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate being able to ask all those questions. I'm in that station every day of the week. Oh, okay. <laughs> and now there we have we're having problems with turning mics for non-committee members on and off. So I'm going to ask the people. I I did see the one from. Uh, uh, in in the the chat from uh, I can't get my chat up. All right, uh, I want to ask a clarifying question, um, real quick yeah. about like my, my first comment. So, in terms of the maintenance, is there any other like private entity that is um, involved with this, such as like how, how Barclays actually owns the elevators there? Is there any other private entity that is responsible or owns these? Are these elevators, or are they fully owned by the MTA or NYCT? These would be fully owned by the MTA. Okay, that's fine, thank you. So as I said, there's a problem with turning the mics back on and off. So I, I see the question from uh, Lucy Cotine, which I will read out loud. Uh, there are many buses going down Jerolland and turning right on, on to Court Street. Will the extended sidewalk interfere with the bus turn? They already bunch up. So the answer is, um, as I had um, answered um, somebody regarding the buses, I think it was Esther. Um, the the answer is that we are working with DOT to finalize all the street alignments. Um, obviously, the street impacts will impact the buses. So once we have uh, more information about the final street arrangement during construction, we can let the community know, the, uh, the entire community know as far as you know, the bus, bus impact. You know, so obviously, obviously there will have to be some bus changes, whether we you know, close down the, the street completely, or if there's a lane open for buses or vehicles, you know, whatever, whatever impact there is to the, the final street alignment is and the conf configuration is, there obviously will be some changes to the buses, so we will certainly let everyone know once we uh, we once we have the final word on what those changes are going to be and for how long. And that yeah. should be coming. That should be coming soon. As I said, I mean, it's really you know we really want to just come out tonight to um, because we thought that if we waited until next month, it would be a little too long to let everyone know about the entire project. But we'll certainly have information. Um, in the coming weeks or so regarding uh, the streets and the buses. And then the next question is, how is the community notified? And uh, what, do, what, do you, what is your definition of notifying the community? As far as the buses are concerned, I guess? No, the, I think this is a general one about the, uh, about the elevators and oh, the- So, oh, okay. So I will, we'll, 
we'll be more than happy to periodically come uh, before this committee. Um, on a regular basis, we'll be sending emails to the community board, the elected officials, um, stakeholders to make sure everyone's aware of um, what's happening with the project regarding phasing, scheduling. And then most likely we'll have a, uh, a project page on our website that will have all that information as well. So we'll and definitely be in, we'll definitely be in contact throughout the entire project. And there's a question about the platform edges, as I know that there's a discussion of a uh, of a, a a pilot project to begin installing uh, protectors, right? And I don't think this is one of the stations. Uh, no. We're talking about the um, the um, yeah the the um, um, the word is escaping me now, but no, that's that's not part of this project. Yeah, I think Canal Street's one of those, but the the uh, uh, sure. uh, and then the question: Will there be elevators added at other stations? And uh, uh, while this one, this is specifically about this station, uh, the MTA has a design on uh, um, Aspen Avenue. I can tell you the other the other um, station within CB two. I know it's right on the border uh, between you guys and CB three. But the Class N Avenue G station is one of the stations um, upcoming that we will be um, awarding probably by the end of this year. So uh, the Class in Avenue G is the other station uh, within CB2 um, that we're currently um, planned for ADA. Are there any other questions from people in the community about this specific project, MTA project? So I'll be sending over uh, to the community board the uh, the presentation via email um, right after this meeting. Um, so Taya, you should be getting it soon. Thank you, uh, Andy, and your staff for the presentation. We appreciate it. We obviously this is an area that we're concerned about. We are concerned about the uh, uh, making uh, the eight the stations. ADA accessible, and we would hope that, uh, you know, in, in, in an area that's as this busy and this crowded, that uh, you would add some other stations, and I still would like to see one at York Street, but that's not happening. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Thank Sid. You. Thanks, everyone, for your, your patience and uh, your questions. Um, we'll be back in touch, uh, as I said, very soon uh, once we have more information about this project. But we're, we're very, very happy that we're able to um, be able to start this project soon um, for a station that, you know, has long been uh, in the works as far as uh, ADA elevators. So we thank everyone. So the, the next area is obviously is the open streets discussion. So before we get started, I want to call upon the DO, DOT uh, to, for Kyle. Hi, hi Kyle. And uh, uh, allow him to make whatever he, a statement he would like to make. Great. Thank you, Sid. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kyle Gorman from the city's Department of Transportation. I'm an assistant director in our public space unit, and I manage our open streets program all across New York City, including here in CB2. Um, just a few quick reminders um, before we get into the discussion about all the open streets within the community board here. Um, first and foremost, this is now the fourth year of open streets, which is kind of crazy to believe um, all um, that has happened in that time. Open Streets is now a permanent program in New York City uh, because of the le legislation passed in 2021. So it really codifies Open Streets as a program that DOT manages, as well as some of the infrastructure projects um, that have been happening in and around the city um, as it pertains to the evolution of certain open streets into pedestrian plazas, shared streets, and uh, so on. So super exciting opportunity uh, here to reclaim space from vehicles, enhance the public realm, support our economy, build community, um, so on and so forth. Um, so that's just a little bit of a high level overview for open streets. 
One quick update because we're currently now in the comment period for uh, community board and elected officials, um, which were given 45 days to comment on 2023 open streets applications, at least this first batch. There will be a second batch um, coming probably in the summer. Um, but just a quick update on the information that was previously shared. Um, we unfortunately made a small clerical error in um, the notification letters that were shared with the community board. Um, the hours for Willoughby on the letter said it was going to be seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., where, in fact, the hours for Willoughby um, in 2023 are actually 24-7, so there'll be no changes to the schedule. That is the current schedule that's maintained on Willoughby um, Avenue, uh, open street. Uh, South Portland, though, had said that it was also going to be 24-7, when, in fact, that open street um, on South Portland is only going to be in effect from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day of the week. Um, so once again, Willoughby will remain 24-7 um, throughout this season of open streets, and South Portland will uh, stick to an 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. schedule. Um, happy to take any questions that we have as we go through um, all of the sites tonight. Really appreciate everyone's continued collaboration and partnership with Open Streets. I know uh, it's been a long time coming and a, a lot of sort of hurdles have been thrown our way, but really excited to have a conversation tonight about all things Open Streets. So thank you so much for having me tonight and I'll kick it back to Sid. Okay, so, so as I said before, we're gonna go through the list of Open Streets as, as, uh, uh, as we have it from uh, uh, from from uh, D from DOT, hopefully the correction will be there. Uh, we we have met, we, we and I'm just to remind your mind, Kyle, uh, that uh, when when we, we will we will uh, we we have an open we have a comment that that the community board made after being voted on by this committee and then voting on by the full board on Willoughby. All right. I'm aware that last year it was rejected. I, I'm quite well aware of that. Uh, uh, but but that is that is the position of the board. That remains the position of the board. Uh, 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 and uh, someone's asking the specific question. Would you clarify exactly what what is what is it says Willoughby Walk Open Street? But I, I assume she means Willoughby. Willoughby, Willoughby Avenue, or, or what? What? A, why don't you go in, in general? Uh, what? 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 What an open street means, because that, that may be helpful to some of the people uh, who haven't heard it. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to give sort of yeah, just a quick overview. So open street. Um, there's basically three distinct types of open streets, and I'll use some examples um, in and around Community Board 2 so people can reference those. So the first one that I'll describe is Willoughby Avenue. That's our limited local access type of open street. So it is as exactly as it's named. It's a limited local access street for vehicles where bike and pedestrian, uh, bike cyclists and pedestrians are prioritized and vehicles must adhere to a five mile per hour uh, schedule. Thank you so much for pulling up the, the screen as well, too. Um, perfect um, example. So limited local access is broadly defined as anyone who sort of has a home, lives, apartment, rent, whatever, uh, has, does business, um, is a doing some sort of pickup or drop off, any sort of reason uh, that is local and you need to get on that block, you can drive there. That also includes parking for the general public. Um, there's no specific regulation that states only people who live on a certain block or who own a business on a block can park there. Parking is still uh, open to the public so long as you follow our curb regulations. Um, so Willoughby Avenue open streets runs between Washington Park and Washington Avenue. Um, it is in effect from 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and as I'm sure many folks who are on the line tonight know that when you're out there, there are tons of people walking in the street on their way to the park, on the way to school, the farmer's market, to their apartment and in and around all uh, all parts of, of Brooklyn. The second type of open street is the full closure open street. This is uh, similar to uh, what was done on Montague Street last year, as well as Vanderbilt, which is I know a little bit to the east of CB2, but this is where we see expanded outdoor dining, no vehicle access or parking. Um, and, and when you see that, and then that allows for the outdoor dining and programming and lots of other vibrant activations. 
Uh, and then the third type of open street is the full closure for schools. This is the program that's essentially replacing play streets, um, which has a hundred year history here in New York City. Uh, same principles apply, essentially no parking or vehicle access when these are in effect. Uh, and schools can use it for outdoor recreation, outdoor learning, safer pickup and drop off operations and um, so on. Um, hope that answers your questions, but please uh, do let me know. It, 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 has there any special training been given to accessorize and to anybody else about what it means so that they know that they, in fact, can go use it? Yeah, we have a great working relationship with the NCA Accessorite team um, to make sure that the drivers, not only of the big white buses that we're all very familiar with, but also uh, folks who might be providing Accessorite services via Uber, Lyft and other types of for hire vehicle um, companies that they uh, need to provide that service to those customers um, and access the blocks as needed. We've updated the traffic uh, signage as of last year to uh, say do not enter except pedestrians, uh, cyclists, and local vehicles, and that's uh, been working pretty well. And, and that sign will be uniform throughout. One of the problems which I've raised before is they're using different signs on different streets that is confusing. In fact, the sign that you had shown in the uh, uh, in the presentation doesn't say what you say. Actually, it says something different. And I just want to know, uh, will those signs be uniform so that people know that local access is allowed? Yes, we'll definitely make sure that we take an inventory of all the signs in the open street and make sure that it's uniform. And, and are, the, are, the, are those signs going to be on rollers this year, or are they still the ones that are uh, uh, you, you wind up getting broken really easily? Uh, you mean the metal barriers? Yes. Um, yeah, we're going to continue to use the metal barriers. We're actually working on some research related to alternatives to those um, to those metal barriers, more formal infrastructure. No uh, updates just yet, but uh, that is a top priority of ours. And the question which is in the chat, which I will ask, is that uh, why is Willoughby staying 24-7 while South Portland hours are being cut down? So um, South Portland's hours really are not effectively being cut down. It was like I, I said earlier, unfortunately, a clerical error. Um, it'll remain the same 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. seven days a week as it's been since 2020. Um, Willoughby, you know, has become one of our more successful open street sites um, in the city. Um, it is well used throughout the day and into the evening hours as well. And like I said, open streets is a permanent program. We are not retreating on um, open streets by any means. I was with the mayor just this past Sunday um, who was talking about how we need a major culture shift in our city to make sure that people are prioritizing walking, biking, and transit over driving. So. Uh, we would really prefer to keep open streets and Willoughby active 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because our streets exist 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go down the list and we're going to call on people. We're going to ask everybody to put their hands down, all right, and that we will go down the list and do it from the hands. Uh, uh, and you could ask questions on a specific one. I have to make a, um, uh, I am, the Borm Hill Association is a, a, a sponsor on one of the open streets. And during that presentation, when we get to uh, the, like the, the last one, of course, that when we, when we, when we, uh, 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 when we it's an inactive okay uh so uh that we will we will we will discuss go in each each one we will open them up for uh, uh discussion of each one and have people so we will do that in in then i said i'm, I'm going to ask everyone to put their hands down because we're going to go through each one and then ask people to put their hands up when we get to the one they have concern about. Uh, if at the end the committee members want to make a general comment on on open streets, we will do that. 
uh, but I want to allow, uh, we will start op asking, the first one was Mary McDowell, Friends School. Uh, is there any comment on Mary McDowell, uh, a Friends School one? Mr. Meyer, the only the only change we need to make tonight um, is that we do need to ask folks to type their question into chat, please. We are not unmuting anyone. Okay, excuse me. I I apologize. So, uh, Chris, if if you are going to comment, we're gonna we're gonna go through each and every one in order. All right. And you could make a comment on them each order. So the first so if, one. If, if you have a question about taking place between Sydney and Clinton, months April through July, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., not active on Saturday or Sunday, please type your question in chat. And we'll wait a minute or two. Uh, Mr. Bastian says BHA has no issues with Aiken Place. Thanks very much. Not surprised, Mr. Meyer. Let's move on to the next one. Is Hanover Place between Fulton right. and Livingston? That is also a school closure from April through July, hours of 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, sponsored by the Brooklyn Rise Charter School. Does anyone have a question about the Hanover Place Open Street. Ms. Colin Chung, you are welcome to come off mic and speak as you are a committee member. Thanks, Taya, sorry about that. Um, I think starting the school closures later um, to match the other school closures makes more sense because Livingston is, um, oh, actually, no, that's Hanover Place. Um, for that one, I don't have a comment. It's a, that's a small street, Never mind. Hearing none, we'll go out to the Washington Street between Front and Water. I believe Mr. Flanoy is on the call. Mr. Flanoy, if you'd like to make a comment, but I'm more than happy to hear from you. Not a problem. Uh, we had a discussion about this earlier and um, the community and also the bid. And we had a discussion also with DOT and the stakeholders. And we've come to an agreement uh, among the four, uh, which will come before the full board. And we then will revisit uh, again come June. Uh, I will read some of these out for the record. Sophia in 11201 says, Dumbo has far too many street closures to add one for open streets, which local residents do not use. It has become very difficult to get around our small neighborhood on foot, on bike, with cars and buses. Open streets just makes it more challenging with more street closures and non-resident crowds. Um, Jimmy Ng has written us a letter and also spoke at length at the economic development meeting um, in summary, as Mr. Flanoy just indicated, the committee's recommendation to the board is that instead of 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., seven days a week, their recommendation is 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Sunday through Thursday, which the committee felt was a struck a balance for all of the parties in attendance. Um, Mr. Morrow, who is a public member of this board, says, as a lifetime resident of this location, I support this project. Uh, Mr. Meyer, I would suggest maybe, since there was a, a two-hour discussion on Washington Street previously, that maybe that comment is closed. Yeah, though, but there was also another comment. I received an email, which I sent to you, which, which as long as you read the other one, that should be read as well. Um, from which, from Mr. which, Mr. Steiner. Oh, one second. Bond said, "I've got seven windows open already." One second. <laughs> I, I can I can read it uh, if you yes, wait a please. second. I, Thanks so I, much. I, it just it's just going to take me a second to get there. Uh -oh. 
So many of the comments that you're seeing in chat are reflect repeats of comments that were mentioned in the two hour economic development committee meeting. Um, and in fact, by some of the same people. Um, I think that that was a very good example of how to make this a productive discussion. Um, the board, the committee and the board are not able to act on um, sentiment. They are able to act on specific suggestions. So again, the suggestion for Washington Street was rather than the proposed 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week, the proposal is 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Sunday through Thursday, no change on the weekends. And I also wanted to thank Mr. Gorman from DOT because he did also agree that DOT will revisit this location in June um, after they've been operational for a few months. And, and Bill Stein is the one who made the comment is in the uh, uh, the chart system. But last week, the, uh, Kyle said 9 p.m. So, but the recommendation was 10, 10 uh, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., correct? On um, four days a week? Yes, oh, yeah, 10 a.m. Ten a.m. to 8 p.m. Sunday through Thursday. No change Friday, Saturday. Right, and, and I'll just clarify that the original application was that 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. was inclusive of any setup and breakdown um, time, but we are in receipts or, or will be in receipts of the community board's feedback about the schedule, and then we'll make a determination from there. Um, and Mr. Gorman, just to clarify the question, can we hear more details on what revisiting entails? Um, I understood your your acceptance to mean that you would come back to one of our committees in June to host another public discussion. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes, I'll I'll just be in attendance. Okay. Thanks so much. And, 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 and to, just for clarification for the minutes, the suggestion because i didn't stay for the completion of the edc meeting <laughs> is it seven days a week and start at 10 every day end at 10 on friday and saturday but end at eight every other day correct that, 10 a.m to 8 p.m sunday through thursday 10 a.m to 10 p.m friday and saturday oh thank you uh there's also one other thing that occurred um there will be a traffic officer during the period of the open streets to help mitigate uh, traffic issues within the emergency vehicles. Uh, Bill Stein is the one who's asking me to read his his uh, uh, or, or so, but I can't get for some reason I can't get into my uh, email. Oh, hold on, I can do it on my phone. Just hold for a second. Just give me a minute. Yeah. Mr. Meyer, Bill Stein was also at the previous meeting. Right, I think so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to read what he wrote. Uh, make sure that I have... Uh, uh, the motion was, was amended several times, was finally passed. I just put it in the chat. Well, is it all in the chat now? I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to type the whole thing in the chat. I'm going to read it. I've done my research since last week's CB2 Economic Development Committee meeting about the DOC study that Kyle Gorman offered up as a justification for the Open Street Program. He said in a citywide study that showed that open street programs increase sales by shops and restaurants compared with with the uh, uh, streets with cars linked below is that study which notably did not include washington street inclusion based upon data collected from streets in prospect heights park slope chinatown koreatown and astoria none of these blocks are comparable to washington street which consider the number of existing retail stores and traffic pattern adjacent one-way streets that make it difficult to exit Dumbo when Washington is closed, leading to massive backups on Water Street. The economic justification for seven days a week, closure until nine, full short, considering the block only has a small number of establishments, 
Those who testified last week in favor of the closure, everybody also cited the following. The tourists are great. They're smiling and happy. And the tourists will come to the block so, uh, regardless. So it may be uh, just as well be closed. You're not, these are not justifiable reasons, in my opinion. Some of you have advocated for the extension of open streets all the way from uh, Plymouth Street to Prospect. But most importantly, everyone who testified against the additional hours from 10 a.m. rather than last year's 11 a.m. I suggest in, instead of reducing the hours and numbers of days, rather than eliminating the open streets altogether. Residents were, were open. The compromise was done with the controversial Willoughby Avenue open street in Fort Greene and the committee as well. Unfortunately, the DOT representative was, I'm not going to say what you say. All right. So he disagreed with the, uh, the uh, uh, there's the rest of it. All right. In any, in any, in any case, uh, those are the comments we received. Okay, next up is Vanderbilt. And as I noted in chat, please, if you have questions or comments specifically about Vanderbilt, please post them here. But please note um, the majority, like two thirds of this open street is actually not within the bounds of District 2. Although we do uh, work with our colleagues and is it six, Kyle? I forget. Six, nine, six, it's, uh, nine. CB8. CB8. Eight. <laughs> we do work with them to approve uh, permits for this open street. Um, it's fairly limited, no weekdays, Friday to Saturday, Sunday, 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Are there any comments on Vanderbilt? On Van this is on Val Vanderbilt. I see Esther, do you want to make a comment about what, uh, Vanderbilt? No, it doesn't matter anyway. I okay. want to make a comment about Willoughby. We'll get there, don't worry. I promise you we'll get there. Juliet? No, her hand went down. I on Vanderbilt, I would um, suggest thinking about not including the stretch between Myrtle and Park Avenue. Um, I, I think that is uh, more of a trafficked corridor um, and maybe just on Fridays. Um, I, I have no problem with Saturdays and Sundays, including it. Just because the, Na the Brooklyn Navy Yard is a, is a, is a big access point. And I think people are traveling that corridor. Wait, Julia, could you repeat that, please? Um, I was suggesting um, not including the section between Myrtle and Park on Vanderbilt on Fridays. Oh, um, different, different. That's south, right? Yeah. <laughs> different yeah this, section. Is, this is just between um, Atlantic and Park Place, Myrtle and Park. Oh, I thought it was Park Avenue. Yeah, no, it's, park, it's it park Place. Park. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, I thought it went all the way to Park Avenue. Okay, never mind. Thank you. Yep. We need the we need the uh, little placer avenues. It would have been a great suggestion, though. <laughs> so the comments, which if if uh, uh, people are making comments, was that it's been transformative in the neighborhood. Okay. Let's go to Hoyt. I don't see any more comments about. Oh, I live on Vanderbilt Ave, this side of Atlantic. Traffic begins 7.30 a.m. going towards the Navy. Oh, yes, uh, Jess Greenbaum, That I think you were also thinking Park Avenue instead of Park Place. OK, moving on to Hoyt Street, Mr. Meyer. We we had the Hoyt Street was one that we just had the whole uh, uh, discussion. Oh, yeah. Didn't we? We had we had the whole meeting about, and we had we made a recommendation on this. Yes, Mr. Flanoy, if my memory serves, I believe that was uh, the recommendation was to approve as presented unanimously. Correct. Uh, yeah, that was correct. There was no objection. Basically, just uh, there was some comments in regards to uh, the safety lane um, and also that Grand Army Plaza was going to take control of actually moving the um, barriers back and forth in the event that they have been moved. And those of the so all, Grand Army is the restaurant right on the corner. Yes, exactly. So all issues were resolved. Uh, Just Greenbaum, could you clarify what you're trying to share as a request?
Okay. Um, Jess, if you're able to type that, we will make sure that it goes into the written record, but I'm not quite sure. I, I see the comment. The comment is traffic begins 7.30 a.m. going east, or I'm sorry, going north, and from 2.30 going south. Montague Street. The proposal is June through November, three blocks, 11.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. on Saturdays only. Are there any comments about Montague? Uh, comment in chat, and this supports what we've heard in the office as well. BHA supports Montague Street, also Jerome and Remsen and Livingston. Um, I, I don't believe we've ever had a single complaint about Montague Street. It may be the only one on this list. Okay, here we go, Fort Green. Um, Mr. Will Meyer, did you did you want to discuss Willoughby more? Well, obviously, you know, we we the well, the committee and and I, I'm not sure whether it was unanimous or not. I don't remember. Uh, John, what was the vote? What was the vote last time on on Willoughby Avenue? I'll check it. I don't think it was unanimous, but while you talk, I'll find the minutes. All right. Uh, I'm going to let other people talk. I'm going to start with Esther. Yeah, it wasn't unanimous. I didn't vote for it. I didn't believe that we should compromise, and I'm glad I didn't. Because look what happened. You know, I find it interesting that 545 today, we learned that DOT made a, a typo, and they're not changing Willoughby and they're gonna leave it at 24 hours. Meanwhile, when we was in a meeting, the e economic development meeting, Sid congratulated DOT in changing the hours. Kyle Gorman was there, never said a word. Now I believe that this happened because people in Dumbo are complaining about Washington and some people there cited well, why is it that Willoughby can get changed and we should be able to change our hours? But you can't have that. You can't have the community speak up and get what they want in their own neighborhood. So now Willoughby is not changed. I feel sorry for you in Dumbo because DOT is going to do what they want to do. That's it. Uh, Ernie? Yes, uh, Sid. No, I. I just have. You no, know, when you sent the, um, the text at five, five thirty or five forty four, regarding this uh, trains and the agenda, uh, you said, and I don't have a copy. I, I don't think any of the committee members have a copy. It says uh, about the time switch, and then you said attached is a revised letter for Willoughby. Ours will remain. Uh, 24 seven. Uh, I like to see a copy of that letter. Uh, because uh, I hope the letter uh, gave more explanation than Kyle Gorman gave. Uh, it doesn't explain the error. You know, what is the error? Uh, what is the error? Uh, and when did they have this epiphany that there was an error in the uh, and this uh, uh, chart that we're looking at. You know, I looked at it before the meeting. The community looked at that chart before the meeting. They understood uh, the hours for eight to uh, eight to eight. Uh, as far as I, I didn't have any objection or hear any objection uh, from the broader Clinton Hill Fort Green community. Uh, you know, they will have you know you know stood on that. Uh, at the same time, you know, uh, Mr. Gordon, uh, Cal Gordon can uh, give you can give you the party line, but he doesn't acknowledge, and I don't quite get it, that there is still a negative impact, a negative impact that spills over into Fort Green, Clinton Hill, uh, and uh, you know, I ought to know. I, I dealt with a sanitation enforcement agent who's complaining about how he's trying to do sanitation enforcement and open side of the street and the impact that the closure of Willoughby Avenue had had on uh, sanitation and the alternate side of the street uh, you know, parking. 
uh, you know, this is not uh, closing uh, streets with no consequences. There are consequences. There are spillover. Uh, these are impact. You know, the mere fact that and I, I, this thing about hiding behind legislation. It's a cop out. I'll tell you the reason why. No one votes for any administration or city administration, state or federal, to be harmed by its government. I didn't vote for uh, uh, Mayor Adams to be harmed. I voted for him for protection. And basically, it says, like, screw you. Now, pay your taxes, property owner, and set the hell up. But, you know, the, the uh, you know, it's obscene. We cannot accept this as long as the impact are still there and they're there. You know, Willoughby Avenue, what they have going for itself are sidewalks, the sidewalk, sidewalk of New York. There's, there's no dirt for that, you know. And then this, this need to continue that with a pandemic that has receded. We've all been vexed, vexed and double boosted and triple, and triple boosted and have now taken the air travel and we're not being uh, uh, separated. But I like to see that letter for more explanation. I know that, um, and I, I wish we could have a conversation with the borough commissioner, Keith Bray. I think he would give us, at least give the community some information as opposed to some clerical error. Mr. Ernie? Can you hear me, Ernie? Hi, Mr. Yeah. Gosses. This is Taya from the office. Um, I will be happy to share that letter. Um, if you just check your email, I actually forwarded it to the committee members at, I don't know, maybe 540. Um, we did receive it at, I think, like 513 PM. Um, I assure you that the letter is actually exactly the same as the previous letter. The only difference is the hours. The explanation that came with the letter um, is also included in the email to the committee. It was very straightforward. There was a clerical error um, and we asked Mr. Garman to come today to explain it. But there's no there's no other content in the letter that's being hidden or anything. Well, oh, then, you know, I'll look at the letter, but, you know, letters are acceptable or not acceptable. You know, but as I said, now we repeat it, the negative impact still, still exists. The not only the lack of parking, uh, the people cannot, uh, uh, the impact on seniors who need access to the services, they didn't ask for this. They didn't ask for this. And the thing is that open street is a joke. Nobody uses them. You know, I see TA trying to program, program in open street. That's not how it operates. So, for, so first of all, uh, that letter was not from uh, from me, uh, Ernie. That was from the board office. Okay, it was something the board office sent over. I did not. All right, I just was informed what the letter said. I have not. I I have not seen it. Uh, 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 that's not true. In any case, in any in any case, there are lots of comments in the chart in the chat. You know, we had a a, a full hearing. I'm, I'm going to get to you, Bill. I prom I'm going to go to Esther and then to Bill. And Sid, let me just you know, because you asked, the vote was seven to five for eight to eight, not twenty four seven, and with the exclusion of the one block from uh, Washington. Uh, I, lo I closed the minutes. Let me just do it again. Uh, between Washington and Hall, be removed. Right. And that, and that, so, and that DOT did. But the agree. vote was, the vote was seven to five. Okay, so in thanks. favor. Actually, we had a, a full hearing on this. We voted on it last year. Uh, Esther, you would you like to say something? I make a motion to vote on it again. That the committee vote to change the hours for the compromise that I think is ridiculous for Willoughby at on Willoughby Street. I'm, I'm going to hold. I will hold off until we have all the comments, and we'll come back. Well, you know what? You've made a motion. Is there a second? Yeah, okay. I'll uh, second. 
Uh, it's been seconded by uh, Ernie. Okay. Uh, 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 Wait, uh, the point of clarification. You know, you know, Sid, Sid I, I don't, you know, this is a, it's on for a discussion. It wasn't on for motions or anything. So I don't know that, that that's a fair way to do it without letting, just to call another, to redo the vote. We, we are so lucky to have John Quint as our parliamentarian, and we appreciate you so much. That's correct. This okay. is a discussion then, because then the this is an off. open comment period. That's it. So the, the board, the, the committee is going to collect comments and offer them to the full board as their recommendation. We will collect those recommendations on all 10 of the active open streets and submit those to the DOT. Okay, thank you for clarifying it. Thank you. But Ms. Esther, please feel free to voice your recommendation. Absolutely. So let me understand. You're saying I can't make a motion tonight? That's what John... I, let me, John. Yeah, and I, I respect what, what, John. John knows everything about the rules. <laughs> I just, I want to follow the rules. Just tell me what can I can and I, what can I do and what I cannot do. You can tell us what you think it should be, just like everybody else has been telling us what all the other open streets should be. Okay. And that'll be part of our, our part of the comments. And we do have an official position, and and that was that position was voted on by the board last year as well. So um my position is that I believe that this board, this committee and the board should um still follow the recommendation that we made last year even though it's probably on deaf ears but can i ask a point of process go ahead nicole i said it's like i don't know if it's point of process or clarification but how this could work or would work is so we as a committee already voted on it was three points to remove the segment between washington and hall correct to uh update the signage to match what is on the website and to uh, change the hours so that they were no longer 24 seven. So we already voted on those three items as a kind of a package and it was seven to five. And then I think was passed to the full board which was also like a voted on and approved. So those things have already been uh, are, are on, on record as our official position. It's up to DOT to then take those recommendations and actually implement them whether or not they do, you know, that's up to our and the community's continued pressure advocacy or, or whatnot. But we have already voted on as a board these items, and two out of the three have been implemented so far. Is that correct? And, and we want to reinforce what we voted on. Is there an? an... No, I, I, I think I think you're right, Nicole. From from a parliamentarian parliamentary <laughs> view, that's what we voted on. We are, and to some extent, we've already had it thrown back at us that the DOT is not going to listen to us. So, but. We don't, we don't have, we don't approve, we only recommend. We can't stop it. That's for our elected officials or for DOT to realize where the community stands. Okay, I wanna move on to, to uh, uh, Juliet and then to uh, uh, Brian. Thanks, Sid. I wanted to ask Kyle if he could explain DOT's rationale for maintaining the 24 seven seven days a week. Um, we heard very little of the rationale in the presentation. We heard the clerical error and we heard that it's well utilized at all hours of the day. Does DOT have data, have pedestrian counts seven days a week in the evenings post 8 p.m. and into the, the nights and maybe even the early mornings that shows how utilized um, this street is, this open street is during the hours that the community board in a very democratic process through a couple of hours of listening to both sides of the arguments, weighing very valid, valid arguments on both sides, came up with this compromise proposal for DOT to reject the community board's democratic compromise proposal. What data and what rationale do they have? I'd like to know that. Yeah, happy to answer that question and um, those questions. Um, I just do want to reiterate the point that Nicole actually made that of the three asks, DOT did make two thirds of those. So um, definitely here for the democratic process and 
uh, I just want to make sure that I reiterate that point that we we did in fact make um, some changes after a discourse at the community board last year. Um, I'll also admit that we do not in fact have traffic count data uh, between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. So effectively the overnight and early morning hours. That is something we can pretty easily schedule um, with our contractor that collects those counts and we'd be happy to share those with the board in the future once we're able to collect and then analyze them. Um, there has been other types of traffic counts that have been done during the, the sort of daytime and early evening hours that really do show that there's a sort of exponential sort of uh, or much higher use of the street by pedestrians and cyclists um, than vehicles, generally speaking. Um, so yeah, I mean, and, and do it, did I answer all your questions? I'm sorry. I asked for the rationale of why the um, later hours were not removed um, pursuant to our recommendation, the, the 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. hours. Correct, I'm sorry, yes, correct. Um, so um, like I said, Open Streets is now a permanent program. Um, Willoughby Ave was actually one of the first Open Streets to receive some level of design treatment um, in order to sort of more use our infrastructure toolkits more Modify the open street through design. So there's a series of curb extensions, new signage, planters, and other traffic calming elements that we added throughout the corridor that enabled us to um, designate it as 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And, you know, as it stands, um, our streets are active 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we want open streets to be active 24 hours seven days a week in certain instances where it makes sense because, you know, there are still crashes that happen at night. Someone in the comments actually said that, you know, exponentially and that to an infinite proportion almost, cars are killing and severely injuring more uh, pedestrians and cyclists on an annual basis than cyclists are doing to pedestrians or pedestrians on pedestrians. Um, so there's pretty strong rationale to keep it just from that perspective because we want to make sure our streets are as safe as possible at all times. Brian, did I have you been called on the? I don't think you've been called yet on this one. Nope. Thank you. Um, and just to follow up on um, something that you mentioned, uh, Kyle, um, about <clears throat> being one of the earlier ones. Um, uh, several of the other open streets, it's like Thirty Fourth Avenue and Berry Street, have you know received. Um, or like undergoing like a process to make them um, permanent and, and whether that's, you know, like plazas or uh, um, uh, traffic reversal, stuff like that. I was just curious if DOT uh, is planning on doing a similar process with Willoughby. Yeah, um, you know, we don't have a firm timeline on that, but a central part of the legislation that made the Open Streets program permanent, which was voted upon by City council members and, and the mayor, um, so the folks that you vote for, um, really uh, sort of mandates DOT to evaluate successful open streets and consider uh, a number of public realm and traffic calming uh, opportunities. So I think in the future, we would love to continue the conversation about this particular open street and seeing what design and infrastructure opportunities are possible. Um, I mentioned earlier about the pilot related to thinking about alternatives to the metal barrier, using more formal infrastructure to uh, sort of uh, make sure that the street remains local access and bike and pedestrian priority. And then like you alluded to, our, our toolkit is pretty wide. There's a lot of things that we could consider for this open street and, and all open streets across the city, including pedestrian plazas, shared streets, street seats, um, and other traffic calming um, elements. Ernie, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Ernie, I'm gonna let you speak again and then we're gonna move on to another subject. Yeah. yeah. Um, There was something in Kyle Gorman's presentation when he was speaking that sort of took my breath away. He was sort of emphatic about we're not going to retreat 
And we didn't even ask that. We just asked for an explanation. I don't understand where that came from. But, you know, we were here having a conversation about open street, and you were very emphatic. It's done, built, and we ain't going to retreat. I'd never heard of a bureaucrat who's for the <laughs> representing a city agency. I, I don't know if your commissioner directed you to say that. I'm quite sure that the mayor didn't say that. But uh, it, it was something that really took my breath away as a representative from a city agency that we pay for. I'm done. Okay. Uh, what's the what's the next one on the list, please? There are many comments about Willoughby Street, one way or the other. Both some in favor of it, some opposed. Uh, we see the comments. As I said, we voted on this before, and uh... Mr. Meyer, I I believe that uh, Sandy Balboza has a question. Sandy. Go ahead. Sandy, you should be able to unmute yourself now. Please come off mute. Sandy. Ms. Belbaza is typing for some reason. I don't know why she says, I expect to have my comments read out loud for the record. Unfortunately, there have been, there is so much traffic in the chat because people continue to comment that I don't know where her last question is. Could you retype it please, Sandy? Uh, Ms. Nelly Davis, please withhold comments for now. We are looking for questions which end with the question mark. Likewise, Ms. Rainey. Sandy, I'm sorry we missed your question previously. Can you retype it or come off of mute, please? Mr. Gorman, would you like to voice what you think the opposition to Open Street is saying? Um, I don't know if that's an appropriate question. <laughs> Mr. Meyer, how would you like to proceed? That's that's okay. Hold on for a minute. Hold on for a second. Hey, that's not Sandy Balboza. Thank you. You want to ask a question since you got me on the phone? No, no, we, we've already, we've already, we stopped them. But uh, well, we just stopped it. Sandy, do you have a question? You have something you want me to say it on your behalf? Okay, thank you. Goodbye. She doesn't have anything to say, add. I'm sure she has something to say, but nothing to add right now. In, in any case, let's move on to the next uh, uh, to, uh, topic. That sub, the next one. Okay, one second. The next one is, oh gosh, where were we? South Portland. South Portland Avenue, beat the cow, beat the, beat the cow and Lafayette. Any um, comments on that one? Unfortunately, Mr. Garman, we did have quite a few comments to the office. That folks are very excited about this becoming a 24 hour street. So perhaps they would be a better target for this initiative. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> are there any- Don't open that up. <laughs> Are there any questions about South Portland Avenue, which is 
a limited closure year round January through December 31st. Uh, the proposal is 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. seven days a week, which is the same as it currently operates. And it's one block, right? It is only, seven. it's, it's, yes, it's one long one block, a, a long block. Chat is currently open for questions about South Portland Avenue. I don't see any questions about South Portland Avenue, Mr. Okay, Meyer. so we're going to next one is Hall, uh, Hall Street. Hall Street, one block between Park and Myrtle. Um, Change is only one hour earlier, so now it would be 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week. Um, there was a question received at the office, which I think was fair. I wonder if Mr. Gorman can answer this. It's the, the question was that this, this one, this single block actually ends on the north side at a city public park. So the question was, why does this, why, since there's already public open space available, why an open street at this location? Yeah, so open streets act not only as adding more open public space, they also act as mobility corridors and people have to get to park. We want to make sure that they have the safest possible route to get there. And open streets are the perfect way to get to park. Is anyone from the Hall Street Block Association on the line? I believe we were communicating with them. I believe I saw one of them in the chat, Leah, earlier. I don't know if she's still here. If they're still here. Oh, I don't, I don't okay. see them. Uh, Juliet, okay, Ed, Juliet's got a hand raised. Yes, Juliet. Just wanted to ask um, um, people who are parked on that street can still drive through that street, right? They can still un Correct. park yep. and not. Okay. Yeah, they're limited. They're not school. I don't see any other, oh, I don't see questions. There are some comments about Hall Street. We will collect those and include them in the written commentary. Are there any other questions about Hall Street? Tarolaman, three blocks between Furman and Hicks, sponsored by Willow Town Association. April through November, hours as shown. Um, was there a particular reason for that 30 minute delay on Monday? That was the only change we noticed. I believe it might account for alternate side parking, but let me double check. Okay. Um, the office has not received any comments or complaints about this. Are there any questions about this on the line tonight? Please type it in chat. Uh, Mr. Meyer. Yes. I, I do recognize that Ms. Roslyn Hubner may have been having a technical issue previously. Um, did you want to entertain that question about South Portland? Yes. Uh, Ms. Hubner, what's your question, please? Can you type it? Uh, Ms. Hubner, I'm sorry, I know you're familiar with uh, other operating processes. We are not allowing folks to come off mic tonight due to security issues. I will just say that PSA again while you're typing. Folks, never, ever, ever, for any reason, ever post a Zoom URL on social media anywhere. Um, Razan, we'll look for your question. Whoa. I don't see a question right there either. Mr. Meyer, would you like to take that? Which question? I'm sorry, which one Which one is this? It, it, it doesn't appear to be a question. It's just a big chunk of text. Yeah, no. And it's about Willoughby. Okay. Yeah, let's move Anyone, on. 
Are there any questions about Livingston, Duffield, or Dunning? We'll take those as a group because those are the school closure. Oh, I'm, I'm, my apologies, Mr. Meyer. We're actually at the end of the 10 open streets proposed for 2023. Uh, Mr. Gorman, while you're on the call, could you please confirm for everyone in attendance, these four open streets are going to end on June 30th and the remaining that are grayed out are inactive, is that correct? So um, of the ones that are ending on June 30th, uh, since they are um, all schools, they do still actually have until April 14th to apply for next school year. So you might see them in the next batch of open streets notification letters in the summer. Um, but as it stands right now, we haven't received an application from them and they will end on June 30th. Thank you. And the gray one and the gray ones are uh, are inactive. Correct. As it stands right now, we have not received a renewal application for these um, six things. And I'll check on I'll check on the ones of Borham Hill. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for your comments and your input. Next thing on the agenda is the oh wait a minute, uh, uh, Juliet, what what do you 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 have a comment or I have a comment on the Packer Street one. Are we hearing that? The Livingston? Sure. Okay. Um, so for that one in Hanover Place, they, it, it's a very long duration of open street for the school. And the other schools have all asked for much shorter durations of like uh, 10 or 10.30 or 11 to 2 or 3 p.m. Um, that street is a residential street otherwise. Um, uh, Livingston and there's parking on that street and that parking um, there's no parking from 7 30 to 8 a.m and um, then there's a board of elections authorized vehicles parking on that street as well so I would I would ask first of all for for those um, school open streets whether parents who are driving their children to, to drop them off are allowed to do so during open streets and then school buses are allowed to drive on that street during open streets if not, I would propose that those um, those two school um, streets be limited to like nine to three, something like that. Some uh, something not within the drop off um, and pick up times. Yeah, so um, school buses would be permitted at all times on the full closure school type of open street. Um, generally, we do not allow for like parent drop off by vehicles on a school open street because a lot of times the schools are using it so it's safer for people who are walking or biking to take their kids to school in a safer way. Um, I'm so sorry, I know you asked another question. It's okay, I, I can respond to that. My uh, uh, child actually went to school on Hanover Place, uh, not this past year, but in um, uh, before COVID. And I do pass by there every morning and there are a line of cars there of parents who drive their children and drop them off on Hanover Place. So I would recommend that that open street start later because otherwise, you know, they can't drive on Fulton and otherwise Livingston is gonna get totally backed up and it's already backed up. Um, and there are parents of very small children and it would be inappropriate for them to, you know, just let their child off on Livingston and walk, walk you know, the, the three quarters of a block down to the school on Hanover. Um, it would be better if the open street started after school started, so after nine o'clock, and then uh, ended before three o'clock. Understood. We'll, 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 both, uh, let me circle, got it. Let me circle back with the, the school on this one in particular, and I'll get back to the board. Thank you. And uh, Packer as well on Livingston, because also for the neighborhood, you know, people shouldn't have to wake up at seven o'clock to move their cars if, you know, they were allowed to park until 730 before. Got it. Okay, thank you, everyone. This is the end of the discussion on open streets. I appreciate the comment. I am sorry we have uh, a problem with the uh, the in the chat, uh, and uh, unfortunately, that's the way we had to do it today. So the chair, the chair's person report. Uh, I want to point out that Atlantic Avenue. There will be a charrette on the design. For Atlantic uh, uh, Atlantic Avenue and the BQE um, on on how that 
areas to be changed. Uh, I don't know the exact date on it, but uh, I would ask anybody, everybody who's interested in that to look out for that and to be whether it will be done in physically uh, or online uh, that to participate in it. That's a very dangerous corner and, and that area needs major re, uh, re, re, redesign. And uh, the continuing design of the BQE is something that we're all involved in and we're all concerned about. Uh, I haven't gone through the police reports, the police reports, for the 8-4 and the 8-8, uh, I will attach them to the minutes like I've been doing late, late recently. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, I ask uh, th those of you who, who have uh, feel that they're, they were not completely heard in the open street discussion to uh, uh, send the information to the community board and to the extent that we get it, we will try to include all the information presented. Uh, is there any other committee business? Juliet, you still have your hand up. <laughs> any community concerns and not open streets? So I was pointing out the Packer Seth has been a big problem. Yes, it has. Not only Packer stuff, but checks out of the mail as well. Uh, someone wants to whether we should whether we discuss rats. There's been a rat discussion at the health and uh, health committee had a uh, 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 a. Uh, Whole session on rats, and uh, uh, while I'm happy to discuss what specifically, uh, you know, and garbage collection again, that's a health committee, it's not a transportation, that is to some extent. Hearing no other committee business, uh, when will the someone asked the question, when will the Ashland uh, Place bike lane be presented? Uh, my understanding is that Dio uh, and Taya, you can correct me. Is it uh, are they going to come back in April on the Ashland Place bike lane? Um, as this is the third month that the DOT has. Uh, delayed that discussion i am no longer willing to go on record <laughs> with any specific months um, however we do know that it is the dot's priority to have this discussion as soon as possible um, and it will absolutely happen this spring we just don't know when i will not and for the for the the meeting in april which i think is on april 18th which is uh, my birthday, in fact, that I will not be in country. So I will try to do it online, but I can't promise you how it's going to work. So. I'm just going to put in a plug for the district newsletter here, though, because that's that, that'll be the first way to find out when that bike lane conversation is happening. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion. Seconded. All in favor. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry that we had a difficult meeting because of the uh, death. And we'll see what we can do for the next meeting. Thank you and good night. Good night, all. Good night.